In this video, we're going to cover quite a bit of ground. We're going to install Vice so we can emulate a wide variety of Commodore 8-bit computers. We're going to install CBMPRG Studio so we can write software for all these different machines. We're going to install and configure the Retro Debugger, which we're going to use for things other than debugging, as you will see shortly. We're going to use the Retro Debugger to lift a character set of an existing Commodore 64 game. And then we're going to use CBMPRG Studio to help us put that character set into a VIC-20 basic program, assembler program, a Commodore 16 program, and a Commodore 64 program. So let's get started by installing the Vice Emulator. And if you just search for Vice Emulator, click the first link we see here. We'll go to Download, and we're going to grab this hyperlink right here. And then we're going to open this up. We're going to open another Explorer window by pressing WE. We're going to go to our C drive here. And we're going to create a folder called Commodore to store all of these things in. Then we're just going to drag Vice in here. All right. Uh, then we're going to create shortcuts to our favorite emulators. So we go into the bin directory. Uh, we're going to sort by application. All right, we're going to scroll down here. We're going to right-click, drag out the VIC-20 emulator. We're going to right-click and drag out the Plus 4 emulator. And then we're going to right-click and drag out the Commodore 64 emulator. Before we run these, depending on what version of Windows you have, you may have to do right-click properties and check this unblock feature to get it to work. So I'm going to do that on these three emulators really quick. I'm going to rename these shortcuts so they're easy to find. I'm going to press F2, call this VIC-20. F2, call this plus 4. F2, and call this C64. And it's going to kind of arrange them like this. Now we're going to grab a copy of the CBM PRG Studio. So we'll just search for it. I'm going to click this link here. Go to Download. Scroll to the bottom. I'm going to grab this link here. I click open and inside the zip file is an executable. So we're just going to drag this to the desktop and then close these windows. You can double click the icon. Sometimes in Windows you'll get this uh, error message to search for the app in the store and just click no. And just like with these emulator icons before, if you hit right click properties, you can unblock it here. And now it's going to run. We're just going to use the default directories to install the software and put an icon on our desktop. All right, we'll throw that in the trash. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to put this icon right here. And now the most complicated thing to install is the Retro Debugger. Now, Retro Debugger used to be called C64 Debugger. Uh, so we're going to search for Retro Debugger. And we're going to click this link, and it's going to bring us to a GitHub project. And if you look here, this is where the releases are. We're going to grab this latest release. We're going to scroll down, and we're going to grab this Windows zip file. We're going to open it up, and we're just going to kind of move this window aside. We're going to close this. Press Windows E to get another Explorer window. This PC, go to our Commodore directory, and we're going to drag this folder into it. We're going to close this window. So Retro Debugger out of the box does not come with the ROM files to emulate the Commodore 64. So we're going to take the ones out of Vice, uh, rename them, and use them in Retro Debugger. So here's what we need to do. We need to create a new folder in this directory called ROMs. All right. We're going to open up another Explorer Windows with Windows E, and we're going to go into the Commodore directory, into the Vice directory, and we're going to start with the C64 directory. And then over here, we're going to go into the ROMs directory. We need a copy of BASIC, so we'll copy that over here. Make sure you copy it and don't move it. We need a copy of this file here called CarGen. We want the Dash 01 version. I'm going to copy that. We need a copy of the kernel. And it is... Okay, we're going to copy the 03 version here. And then we're going to drop back a directory. And then we're going to go to the drives directory here. 
and we're going to grab the 1541 with this long file name. Copy this over. And then we're going to copy over this DOS1541ii. You'll notice for a lot of these ROMs, there's different versions. I'm just choosing the versions that Vice uses by default when you bring it up. So we're going to close this window out. And now you have to rename these files to very specific names. So I'm going to press F2. And this just becomes basic with no extension. Get an error that says, do you want to lose the extension? We're going to say yes. We're going to do the same thing for Cargen. We're going to do the same thing for Kernel. We're going to do the same thing for the 1541. Then we're going to do the same thing for the 1541 too. This one does require an extra small change. These lowercase i's need to be capital I's. All right, so now we have our ROMs ready to go for the retro debugger. Okay. Before we launch the retro debugger, I'm going to magically place a D64, one of my favorite games from the 80s, onto the desktop. There it is. If you have a copy of this game, great. If not, you can use other games in a gold box series to achieve the same effect. So one last thing we need to do is create a shortcut to Retro Debugger. So we can bring up Windows E for Explorer again. We're going to go into the C colon Commodore Retro Debugger directory, and we're going to create a shortcut to it over here. We're going to press F2 and just kind of rename this to Retro Debugger. Bugger. And similar to the other executables, you may have to check this unblock button for it to work properly. All right, now let's actually have some fun. Let's fire up the retro debugger. So when retro debugger starts, you're going to see an error on the bottom right that says the C64 ROM files are undefined, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're going to see kind of like these windows kind of thrown around. Well, the first thing we're going to do is connect ourselves to the ROM files that we just created. So we're going to go to the settings, C64, and you're going to choose select C64 ROMs folder. All right, and then we're going to go down to this PC, the Commodore directory, and we're going to highlight and select the ROMs folder that we created and just click select folder. And here you'll notice that it found all the ROMs, the Commodore boots up, and everything is alive. I'm going to press OK. So there's a lot going on in Retro Debugger, a whole lot. So let's kind of move some of these windows around and try to explore what we have here. This window is pretty self-explanatory. It's the Commodore 64 and it's running. Because I live in the US, I'm going to change my 64 to be the NTSC model. There we go. Now there's just an absolute megaton of options to use in this program. So that can go through all of them. But I'm going to give you a quick tour of how the UI works. So again, this, this part here is pretty straightforward. Uh, you have this window called Timeline. We're just going to close this for now. Uh, we have this window here, which is a file browser. We're just going to close that for now. We're going to try to build ourselves a pretty simplified interface here. Let's throw the CP window here. What you'll notice here is that font is rather small. Um, if you right click in the window, you get this little slider for the font. Now it doesn't resize the window for you, so we'll do that in a separate action. So this is probably a good size, at least for me to see. Then we'll make this a little bigger. What this window is showing you is the registers on the CPU, showing you the program counter, the accumulator, X, Y, etc. And you're seeing those values in real time as the software runs. This window here, and I'll kind of move this over here and make this a little bigger. Again, the font is way too small, so we're going to right click, and then we're just going to use this little font slider to make it so we can just make it bigger so we can see it. There we go. This shows you the memory live as it's being worked on. We're sitting in zero page right now. This is a very active part of the memory in the Commodore 64, and you can see it changing in real time really quickly. We're going to scroll this down to about 0400 because 0400 is the screen memory. And here you can see what's over here because we're looking at lot raw memory. And you see this little block here blinking? That's the cursor. And if I move the cursor in this window over one, you'll see it move over in a memory map. It's pretty cool. You can see the machine live. Um, 
I'm gonna make this one a little smaller. This window up here called the memory map is really cool. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. This is showing you um, reads and writes to different parts of memory. So the top left here is zero, the bottom right is 64K. And as things happen, you'll see that area come alive. This window here, while neat, is kind of annoying, but I'm gonna look at it for a couple seconds here. We're gonna drag this up. And again, we're gonna make this font a little bigger so we can actually see it. This is showing you what code is running on a computer right now in real time. And you'll notice this program counter matches the address here. And you're basically seeing the kernel in real time just looping. Uh, really neat, but we're just gonna close it because it's a little distracting at the moment. So let's clean this up a little bit and move some of these windows around. Let's close this one. All right, so we've done all that. Um, let's actually load the game. So we're gonna go to File Open. I'm gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna choose War of the Lands. By default, it's going to mount it and load star, if you will, and it's gonna load up the game. And here you're gonna see that there's a bunch of sprites going around and it's got intro and press space bar and it shows you like some BBS phone numbers from the 80s. C64, and we go into this VIC menu, we choose this first option, C64 VIC. You get this window here. I'll make this a little bigger because again, the default font is pretty tiny. And you can see all the sprites there. Uh, you could see the X and Y position moving as, as it's moving on a screen. You could see their colors. Um, and you could see all the different other registers on the VIG chip. Uh, for example, the border is black. That's DO20. The screen's black. That's DO21. Uh, it's pretty neat. So we're going to close that. Uh, we're going to press spacebar here. Now the game's going to start loading. And if we look on our memory map, we can see the data being read into memory, which is kind of cool. There it goes. And we'll just give this a moment to load. All right, and now we're at the main menu of the game. At this point, you'll notice that the game has a really cool looking font. And it looks like it has some other characters for like a bar and these little gold squares. This would be really fun to play with. So let's lift this out of the game. And the way that you do that is we go into Vic Editor and we choose C64 Car Set. This pops another little window open. Again, it's a little too small, so we're gonna kind of make this bigger. Oh, actually this one resizes when you drag it, that's nice. And you could see here uh, the font or the character set. So here you could see that there's 32 characters per line. There's two lines full of character definitions and that's 64 characters. That gives us A through Z or some numbers, the basic list. And you can see in there uh, the bar, the vertical bar, the, the little square and, and the horizontal bar. So let's, let's borrow this. So we're gonna right click on here, go to export character set, and it's gonna put it to our desktop and we'll just call it car set. So I'm gonna press enter. And it's gonna take the data that represents that in memory and write it to a file. All right, so now we have the character set. So let's go use it. So we're gonna file and we're gonna exit out of retro debugger for now. All right, so from here, we're gonna launch the CBM program studio. All right, I'm gonna kind of move this window around so we can see it pretty clearly. That's probably a pretty good size. And we're gonna start a new project. So we're going to file, new project. We're going to choose the unexpanded VIC-20. This is a really fun machine to program on because there's only 5K of RAM and the machine architecture is really simple. So it's a great place to learn machine language and basic. I'm gonna click on next. You can get this error about creating basic 65 programs. We're just gonna say, don't remind us again. Click okay. We're going to choose a project location for all of our projects and we're going to go into this PC. We're going to go into our Commodore directory. We're going to create a new folder in there called projects. I'm going to click OK. And now we're going to create our VIC 20 project inside of that. We're going to call it VIC car set. All right, we're not going to create Git for this. If you want to, you can. There's another option under here that you can't quite see that says add assembler file. It looks like the UI can't quite pick up on it and that's okay. We're gonna click next. We're gonna choose this option so we don't have all those directories. We'll have a nice blank project. And now we're gonna click create. Awesome, so now we have our project. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a little readme.txt file. So we're gonna add a new item, choose text file and we'll just call it readme.txt. 
Now, the only reason why I created that file is I wanted to unlock the character editor, because that's the thing that we really want to mess with. So we're going to click this little icon here for the character editor, and you get the character editor, and it's using the default character ROM for the Commodore 64. And the screen's pretty straightforward. This column shows the character before you edit it. The right column shows what it looks like after you make changes. So if I were to kind of mess around, you'll see that character change over here. Um, and it's showing you each row and the value for it. So as I, as I change this first row, you can see that this value is changing. We're going to do character set import from file. Uh, we're going to take these defaults. So it's going to click OK. And we're going to look for that file that we just created called car set. So we're going to highlight it, click open. And now you can see it has all the cool glyphs from the game. So we just kind of brought them in. And if I scroll down, if you remember I said there's only 64 entries, you'll notice that from 64 and above, it's all just junk. And that's okay because we don't need those characters for whatever imaginary game we think we might be writing. So let's save this to our project. So we can click on character set. We're going to go to click on save and we'll just call it font. And this will create a file in our project called font.cst, our character set. So we can close this. So we're going to hold on to this thought for a moment and we're going to launch the VIC-20 emulator. And we're going to consume that font in our VIC-20. I'm going to make a couple quick changes to the emulator. I'm going to run into display, go to Vic, turn it to unfiltered because I think the default display is it's kind of fuzzy and a little hard to read. And I'm going to go into the machine, the model, and I'm going to choose an NTSC model. Hit close, preference, and save settings. Awesome. So now let's try to program in basic to redefine our character set in the Vic 20. Now the Vic 20 has a whopping 5K of RAM. That first K we can't really touch because that's where zero page and a lot of the operating system internals happen. Basic has three and a half K and the screen has 512 bytes. Our 64 character character set takes 512 bytes of RAM. That's eight bytes per character times 64, which gives you the 512. So we need to take 512 bytes from basic and then we're gonna use that to store our custom character set. So we're going to make basic even smaller than it already is. And we start by typing 10 poke 56 comma 28 colon CLR. What this does is shrinks the size of basic by 512 bytes. CLR resets basic so everything gets kind of shuffled correctly. You may see some programs that also poke 52 comma 28, but you don't really need to do that. When you type in CLR, it does that for you automatically. So if we run this now, and we print free to see how much memory is free, you can see that we have 512 bytes plus the size of our basic program, less memory. Well, that part's pretty easy. The next line of code for our program is poke 36, 869,255. This tells the VIC-20 to look at memory address 7168 instead of the ROM for our character set. Okay, so now it's looking in memory. There's nothing there yet, so it would be blank. So we need to fill that part of memory with the character set. So we're just going to do a quick loop from 7168 to 7679. We're going to read a byte from some data statements that we're going to create in a moment. And we're going to poke that into memory. And that will bring the character set in. When we run this program, we will see the screen turn to garbage and slowly the characters will form as the program reads the data statements into memory. So how do we create the data statements? Well, we're going to go back over here to CBM PRG Studio. We're going to double click our character set oops, whoops, to bring up the editor. We're going to go to character set. We're going to go to export to listing. We're going to choose basic. We're going to choose just the first 64 characters. Then we're going to choose this lowercase option. This way the commands come out in lowercase so that we can easily copy it through Windows into the emulator without creating problems. So we press OK. Now it looks like nothing happened, but if I close this window down, you'll see that it created all these data statements. Awesome. So we're going to press Control A to highlight all of it, Control C to put it in a clipboard, bring back our vice emulator here, and we're going to edit and choose paste to paste them into basic. Cool. 
One minor flaw with basic though, is all those data statements also take up memory. And now we're down to just over a K of RAM for our program. Well, let's run it and see how well this works. You can see the character set being created as it's reading it in. And voila, we have a beautiful character set that we lifted out of a game for VIC-20 basic. So because you only have about a K left of memory, what a lot of early basic programmers did is they would have the first program load the character set like this, maybe set the screen colors and show a title screen of some sort. And then you'd press a button or something and it, then it would load the main game, giving all three and a half K to the game logic. Kind of fun. So let's close this out and let's do it in assembler. And the code that we create is actually much simpler. I'm going to right click up here. We're going to add a new item an assembly language file, and we're going to call it main.asm. We want this program to look like a basic program so our users can just load it and run it. And the way you get started with that is we're going to go to this tools menu and we're going to choose this option called generate syscall. It's kind of cryptic, but let me kind of show you what it does. So if you click it, you get this little menu and they're asking you for a starting address. This is the starting address of your program. Well, we want our program to be created just after our basic is in memory. Uh, we're not quite sure what that is, but I'm going to show you how to figure that out. We're just going to type in 1001 for now. 1001, by the way, is hex for this 4096 number. But we want to choose this bottom option because it creates simpler code. So we're going to click OK. And you kind of get this byte block. This block of bytes is the internal representation of a basic program that has just one line to run our code. Well, we want to start our program and we need to start it just after where this ends. Make this a little wider so we can see the whole line. There we go. So what would the next address be which we would use for our machine language program? Well, this is 1001. This is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D. So our program actually starts at 1000D. So we need to recreate this. So I'm going to delete all this. And I'm going to go Tools, Generate Syscall, and our program starts at 1000D. You'll notice that it typed it in for me because it sees it in the assembler code there. I'm going to choose this bottom option. Cool. Now we have a basic loader for our program, and our program starts at 1000D. All right, so this is going to be the simplest assembler program you've ever seen. We're going to load into the accumulator an FF, and then we're going to store it at 9005. And then we're going to end it with RTS. Not a whole lot going on here. <laughs> what this does is it tells the VIC-20 to, instead of using the character generator ROM to, for our characters, use memory address 7168. So how do we get the characters there? It's, it's insanely simple. So we're going to do star equals dollar sign 1C00, and that is, if I mouse over it, that's hex for 7168. And then what we want to now is instruct the assembler to take the character set binary data and just plop it right here. And the way we do that is we use a directive called INC bin, include binary. And in quotes, you put the file name. Well, this is a font.cst. Whoops, get that out of the way. It's a character set. And this assembler knows it's a character set. And we tell it which characters we want. We want 0 through 63. That's the whole program. Super duper simple. So to run this, we need to target the VIC-20. So we're going to change this to a VIC-20. And we're going to do the unexpanded VIC. All right. I'm going to press Control S to save our program. We're going to click this little gear icon. Okay. We need to go into the emulator control. And then we need to point this at our emulator. So we're going to click Browse. We're going to go into Commodore. We're going to go into GTK Vice. We're going to go to Bin. And we're going to look for that XVIC program. There it is. I'm going to highlight it. We're going to click Open. And then we're going to click OK. So now this is linked to our VIC-20 emulator. And to run it, you just press F5. And before it runs it in the emulator, it's going to show you the complete assembled version of the program. And it looks very similar. Let me just kind of move it over here. It looks very similar to our source code. A couple things you'll notice right off the bat. It's showing us the result of including the binary of the font CST file. And what it does is it turns it into byte directives and just kind of injects the, the raw data. All right, so we, once you close this window, the emulator is going to start, and our program runs, and the character set changes immediately. And that's how we do it in a VIC-20. 
uh, really, really simple. I mean, this program is about as simple as it gets. And because we're an assembly language, we don't have data statements bogging us down and we're left with all this free memory, which is probably about three and a half K RAM to write our program. But we can do the same program on other platforms like the Commodore Plus 4, which is a machine I've been just discovering and having a kind of a fun time writing code for. So we're going to save this and we're going to close this project out. Yep. So let's write this program on a Commodore 16. So we're going to do a new project. We're going to use the Commodore 16. Commodore 16 is really a Commodore Plus 4 with just 16K RAM and without all the built-in software. So let's choose that. We're going to choose next. We're going to call this C16 cars. We did choose that default program location again. So we're going to choose that projects directory. We're going to choose next bottom radio button and we're going to click create. All right. So we're going to add a new item. We're going to create our main.asm. Okay. We're going to change our target machine to Commodore 16. The Commodore 16 and the unexpanded VIC-20 have the exact same basic start memory address. So when you run a tool to create the basic loader, uh, it's the same as the VIC-20. So like the VIC-20, we're going to make our starting address 1000D. If we go to the Tools menu, you'll notice that those two options are good. The sysloader aren't there. There's a couple quirks in the UI in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this project. I'm going to save it. We're going to reopen it. And now the tool menu is back. Not a big deal, but you'll find a couple quirks like that in the software. So we're going to go to tools, generate that syscall. And just like the VIC-20, we're going to choose OK. And we've got our basic loader. So in the Commodore 16, the process is slightly different, yet the same as the VIC-20. We need to tell the Commodore 16 where it's going to read the character set from. And a good spot is going to be 3C, which is the high byte of memory just 3C00. Then we're going to store that address in FF13. And then we're going to load in value C0. And we're going to store that at FF12. That tells the TED chip, which is the video chip in a Commodore 16, to pull the character set from RAM at the address that we just pushed above instead of the ROM. And then we're going to do an RTS to exit. So just like the VIC-20 version, we need to change the program counter to equal the area of memory where we're going to store the character set, in this case, 3C00. We're going to include the character set. Oh, but we need to bring the character set into the file. So let's pull up the character editor. We're going to import that file again. Click OK. Choose character set. We're going to go to character set and save. And we'll call it font again. Choose close. Then just like the VIC-20 version of this program, we're going to do ink bin, which is include binary, font.cst, and we want characters 0 to 63, giving us 64 characters. Cool. Move this window down a little bit. We're going to fire up the plus 4 emulator and make it look like a Commodore 16. So we go to preferences. We're going to go into settings. We're going to go into display. Well, let's first get unfiltered mode on because that, that CRT emulation is just ugly. We're going to go into the machine and go into model. We're going to make this a Commodore 16 NTSC machine. And you'll notice that it went down to 16K of memory. So we're going to close this. Then we're going to preferences, save. So now when we run this emulator, we get our Commodore 16. So let's close this out. Sure. And OK, what we have to do now is link this to that emulator. So we'll go back into these options here. We're in emulator control. Click on browse. Go into the Commodore directory, go into the vice, go into bin, and then we're going to choose the plus four emulator. Press OK. And now we're ready to run our program with F5. Okay, and just like before, it's going to show us the fully assembled code. I'm going to close this window. And there's our Commodore 16 with our characters. Oh, I see there's a syntax error in 10. It looks like there might be a problem with the basic loader that was created. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like we got some garbage. I created the wrong one. So let me show you how to fix this. I created, I chose the wrong option in a basic loader. 
So we're going to delete our basic loader here. We're going to go back to tools, generate syscall, and we got to choose this bottom option, which I forgot to do before. All right. And you'll notice the difference is it puts the number in parentheses, which takes a, t a couple more bytes of memory. So let's save this, close our emulator here, and let's rerun it with F5. Close this window. Ah, there we go. So we've done it on the Commodore 16. <laughs> now, of course, what everyone really wants to do is how do you do this on the Commodore 64? All right, so let's do the Commodore 64 version of this program. So we're going to close this out. And then we're going to do a new project. I'm going to choose Commodore 64. I'm going to choose next. We're going to call this C64 characters. And again, we got to choose that same directory here, this projects directory. We'll click on next. I'm going to create our own structure. And we're going to click create. So we're going to add a new file and we're going to add our assembler file as main.asm. Let's change our target to C64. The Commodore 64 has a different memory address for the start of basic. On a Commodore 64, it's $0.0801. So we're going to start at 080D instead of 100D, it's 080D. So it's not too different. And then we're going to create our basic loader using the same process. We go to tools, and then once again, the options are missing. So we're just going to close our project. Choose yes. Yes, we want to save the file. Then we're going to jump back into it. And now if we go up here and we click on tools, our, our, feet, our menu options are back. So we're going to generate the system call. I'm going to choose the bottom option, and you'll see that it already picked 080D. And there's our basic loader. So we're ready to roll. So once again, let's bring that character set in. I'm going to click the little character set icon. We're getting pretty good at this by now. We're going to import from file. OK. Grab this guy. And then we're going to save it. And we're going to call it font. Close this. And very similar to the other two programs, we're going to load into the accumulator the value 1c. Then we're going to store this at D018, and then we're going to return from subroutine. The 1C being loaded into that register tells the Commodore 64 that the character set can be found at RAM address 3000 instead of the ROM. Change our program counter to 3000. And then in this line of code, we're going to do, again, include binary font.cst, 0, 63. That's really it. So now we have our character set loaded. And it's Commodore 64, so we've got a ton of memory to play with. And all we have to do now is link this to Vice. So we're going to go again into Options. We're in Emulator Control. We're going to browse over here. And we're going to go to Commodore, the bin directory, and we're going to point it at this file here. So now it's linked to Vice quickly open up the emulator first and change some options around. We want to go in and turn off this and choose the unfiltered option to make it look good. I'm going to choose the Commodore 64 NTSC. Hit close. I'm going to save these parameters. Then we're going to close this. Yep, we want to exit. And then like before, we just press F5 to run our program. Close this. There we go, our custom characters at Commodore 64. So there's a couple other interesting things we can do with CBM Program Studio and the emulator for troubleshooting and debugging. We can introduce breakpoints into our code and have the emulator stop so we can analyze the machine state. So if you go into the, the settings here and we go into this menu called debugger, right? we could tell this to use the vice debugger. This is really kind of neat. So we're going to press OK. So let's say I wanted to take a look at this line of code here while it's running, but I want to pause the machine before it runs this line of code. We can press F10 to put what's called a breakpoint. So when I run the emulator, it's going to run my program up to this point and just stop. So, but instead of pressing F5 to run the program, we're going to press F8 to run the program under debugger. So we're going to press F8 here, and it's going to launch Vice. 
it's going to load my program and it's going to freeze and then throw the monitor up at that breakpoint at which happens to be 80F. So if we look over here, I can see the 1C loaded in the accumulator. And the CPU is about to run that next line, STAD018. So this is kind of a really great feature when you're debugging assembly language. In this case, I'm just going to press G to let it run so the program runs. Now, you can also have this link to the retro debugger. So if I go into the options here, I can choose use C64 debugger. Now remember, C64 debugger was renamed to retro debugger. And like the emulator options, we need to point this at that executable. So we're going to go into the Commodore retro debugger, and then we're going to choose this executable and hit open. There is, however, a problem with the integration with retro debugger at this time. So now we've got the breakpoint here. And when we press F8, instead of launching Vice, it's going to launch the Retro Debugger. However, in this version of the Retro Debugger, it doesn't seem to understand the breakpoint file that was passed to it, and it doesn't actually honor the breakpoint, so it won't stop. It just runs the program. However, if you install the old version of Retro Debugger, the last version where it was called C64 Debugger, it does correctly stop at the breakpoint. My best guess is that the file format for the breakpoints is different in Retro Debugger than it was in C64 Debugger, uh, which probably means that either CBM Studio needs to add an option for it, or perhaps it's a bug in Retro Debugger and it's supposed to work with the old format as well. Uh, not really sure. So if you want to use the Retro Debugger with CBM Prog Studio and you want to use that breakpoint feature, you need to grab the older version. So that concludes the tour of Retro Debugger, CBM Prog Studio, and Vice, and how you can use them together to create software for the various different Commodore platforms that are out there. So I'm really looking forward to this weekend, uh, April 12th to the 14th of 2024. I'm going to be attending the Vintage Computer Festival East here in my home state of New Jersey. Um, I can't wait to see what cool things that will inspire me next. They're going to have a classroom uh, set up with Atari computers. That should be really fun to to take a look at. I've never really touched the Atari 8-bit computers. So. Uh, and then thanks everyone for watching the video. I truly appreciate it. I love the comments that I put on here and I love interacting with some of you. Um, this is probably the most passionate group of people I've ever run into and you are all awesome. So hopefully I'll see you guys soon in another video. Take care.